I know it might seem like we were pretty harsh on We Happy Few in yesterday's review, link in the comments by the way, but I wanted to take a moment to address a few things separately of that. First off the bat, everything we said in the review, we stand by wholeheartedly. We were harsh but fair, as we always are. The point we wanted to address today though was despite how mundane and broken We Happy Few might have been, we genuinely believe that Microsoft's purchase of Compulsion Games is actually a really savvy acquisition, and We Happy Few is an example of that. You what, you bloody nutter? We happy if you was trash, I hear you say. Well, yes and no, but we need to separate ambition and vision from delivery here. We Happy Few was an attempt at building a AAA game with an indie team, something that may well be very noble, but it was never going to happen, let's be honest. There is such a thing as being too ambitious. If we compare for a second Compulsion Games with Bioshock Creator, the now defunct Irrational Games, a few things become apparent. According to Compulsion's website, the studio is, and I quote, 40 people squatting in an old gramophone factory in St. Henri, Montreal. Irrational, on the other hand, when developing Bioshock Infinite, was around 90 people. Plus, they had assistance from other 2K studios, no doubt. So, the studio was effectively over twice the size. While Irrational opted for a linear narrative-driven experience, Compulsion, on the other hand, went for an open-world survival game with linear narrative sections. Yes, I said open-world and survival, and linear narrative sections. All this done with 40 people. You could say that it was an ambition thing, but you could also argue that the team had a lack of focus. That's not me making excuses for them either. That's me pointing out that We Happy Few was almost too ambitious for a studio of that size, one that had no experience in open world games, let alone AAA ones. What we should take out of We Happy Few isn't the mundane fetch quests, the arduous survival mechanics, or some bizarre design decisions. We should take away the vision the world building, the set pieces, the narrative twists and turns that would feel right at home in a Bioshock game. The truth is We Happy View probably has a good solid six hours of story driven content in there and some truly unique set pieces that would make up a perfect Bioshock-esque game on its own. The problem was that it was buried beneath so much bullshit that people will likely never see that and those that do will likely have been put off by the rest of it that they might not appreciate those brilliant moments. Yes, I said brilliant. With Microsoft at the helm though, with them pulling the strings behind the curtain and with their money invested in Compulsion Games, they could turn a raw studio with some artistic vision into a studio that could potentially deliver AAA games. Compulsion, in the case of We Happy Few, is looking like a studio that perhaps bit off more than it could chew. It looks like a studio that needs a little guidance. A good example of what backing of a good publisher can do actually took place in Irrational Games and 2K's case with Bioshock Infinite, when they brought in Gears of War's Rod Ferguson to guide the ship to port, a guy who is now back at Microsoft at Coalition working on, yes, the next Gears. Ferguson has a reputation in the games industry for delivering the goods, motivating the team, and getting a product to market with so much polish that you could genuinely see your face in it. That's what money backing and publisher support gets you. There is a lot of potential in We Happy Few, and it's no happy coincidence that I've talked a lot about Bioshock in this bit, because it had shades of it running throughout. With Microsoft's backing, Compulsion could take the next step and actually create a game to rival Bioshock, if some of the moments in their latest release are anything to go by. We Happy Few had the vision nailed on. The characters, the story beats, the world building, the dramatic twists. It had the potential, but it just didn't have the delivery. It was too ambitious for a studio of 40 people. And that is why we truly believe that Compulsion Games was a savvy acquisition for Microsoft. Of course, it could go the other way, a bit like State of Decay, but positivity, folks, goes a long way, and we're going to keep the faith. Thanks for joining us, folks. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.